Hey guys, what's up? It's CS back here with another installment, and here are my picks for UFC 163, Odo vs. Korean Zombie. Injury played card, but nevertheless, it's still going to be fun. Brazilians always come to fight, so I really can't wait for this one. And yeah, we're just going to kick things off in the main card, of course, at the top main event. Jose Aldo vs. Jung Chan Sung for Aldo's featherweight championship. Alright, now most of you guys know, Korean Zombie is my dude. I love Jung Chan Sung. Uh, I even have a photo of him with me on my Facebook if you guys want to check that out. But I'm just trying to figure out how he wins this one because i got to go with Jose Aldo all day, every day here. Aldo is such a crazy volume striker in the featherweight division. You know, he's kind of like a featherweight Shogun. Uh, Shogun in his prime, you know, stellar takedown defense. And then, of course, uh, he knows how to move laterally as far as um, just working angles around you, just ripping leg kicks, coming in for um, sick hooks and uh, other combinations. A decent straight puncher as well. He's just um, a handful on the feet. And unless you can be as good a striker or get him down, you're probably going to be a punching bag. All those clinch games pretty good as well. You know, he has decent knees in the clinch, and uh, he knows how to just run up on you and rip a flying knee as well quickly. So, uh, all those nuts, you know, um, he knows how to do everything on feet really well, and I really can't take uh, Jung seriously on the feet against him. Uh, Jung has pretty good snap on his punches. He's a lanky guy, so maybe he's able to stun Jose Aldo here and there, but he's not going to be spending enough time in the pocket uh, to catch Jose Aldo is Jung because Jose Aldo's um, lateral movement's way too good. Um, Jung's not going to find his range as well as he should. Jung's going to be ricky, uh, getting leg kicked all the time. It's not even going to be close in my opinion. I've got to go with Jose Aldo, just rip leg kicks all day and then open up more with his combinations as it wears on into rounds two and three. Uh, I'm, if I'm Jose Aldo, I'm trying to finish Jung as soon as possible because, of course, Jose Aldo's gas tank isn't the greatest. And I, if I'm him, I wouldn't try to... Um, show everyone that he can go five rounds strong without gassing. I don't think this is a fight to do it. Just get Jung out of there because Jung has uncanny finishing ability. You know, Jung finds an opening to take it to the mat and you're not as explosive um, and you don't have the cardio anymore to just get back up onto your feet. Jung might be able to um, find top position, uh, maybe roll for an arm bar or a mounted triangle, something stupid like that. Uh, I really want. I really wouldn't want to play with uh, Jung in the later rounds. If I'm Jose Aldo, just get him out of there. So watch for Jose Aldo to just rip leg kicks all day, open up with his combinations. Come rounds two or three, and eventually, I think he's gonna TKO Jung. With that, it just Jung's not that much of a mobile fighter, in my opinion, and. You know, that's going to be his own undoing because I think all leg kicks are going to be the story in this fight because of that. So, Jose Aldo, I'm going to say he gets it done early third round via TKO due to strikes. Anyway, let's move on to that light heavyweight match between Leona Machida and Phil Davis in the co-main event. Holy crap, what a co-main event is this? Because how does Leona Machida lose this fight? Uh, Phil Davis, you know, he's a solid up-and-comer in the light heavyweight division. But, you know, he ain't ready for Machida, and he's d showed nothing to us to why he should be ready for uh, Leona Machida. Like, he just beat Vinny Magalesh in his last bout, you know. I think Phil Davis should be getting, um, who can he get in the heavyweight division? Um, someone lower than Glover Teixeira, I'll say that. But Machida, you know, why? Uh, this is a waste of a fight for Machida because, um, you know, we know he's going to run through Phil Davis, and Phil Davis should be getting someone else. So it's kind of tragic. Oh, well, uh, how does Machida beat Phil Davis? Uh, of course, just by playing the distance game. You know, Machida is very good at gauging distance. Uh, we've heard, you know, from everyone, Joe Rogan included. Um, everyone talks about how well Machida it, uh, fights from the outside and being able to come in for something straight if he needs to. Um, pretty good kicks as well with his karate background. He has that stance where he kind of leaves his uh, front leg out there. And uh, he's able to just um, move back and forth if he needs to um, to avoid takedowns or to avoid getting hit. Now, um, really, as far as stand-up, uh, the only way he can get rocked is usually if he comes in, you know what I'm saying? Kind of happened against John Jones and, of course, happened against um, Shogun Hua. So um, when he loses, it's kind of like he just gets caught, you know? But that's still his own undoing, so I'm not going to put him up on the pedestal because of that. Against Phil Davis, he has no chance of getting caught. Phil Davis' stand-up is not great, and he doesn't hit hard, so he has nothing to worry about, does Leona Machida, as long as he can keep it standing. I think he's just going to tee off on Phil Davis the whole time, uh, as Phil Davis is waiting for an opening to clinch up 
or take Machida down. But again, I think Machida plays the distance too well to even get clinched up. So, gotta go with Machida to um, just tee off on Phil Davis up until he finds an opportunity to knock Phil Davis out, win via strikes. I say it happens in the second round. So, there you go. TKO for Leo Machida. Anyway, let's move on to the middleweight division. Uh, here's a fight between the tough winner, Cesar Mutach Ferreira, and Tiago Santos. Now, Tiago Santos taking this fight on late notice. Of course, it was supposed to be Clint Hesner versus Cesar Mutach, which would have been a way tougher fight. Uh, but Tiago Santos, he's okay at everything. And Cesar Mutach is kind of good at everything. And not only that, Cesar is what a true middleweight uh tiago santos you know he looks like a welterweight he is a welterweight he's just taking this on short notice of course so he's not going to cut any weight or anything but he's just going to come in there you know kind of cold and when i mean cold you know he didn't have a heck of a whole lot of time to train for this fight cesar's already better on paper than tiago santos at everything so cesar mutach should win this fight you know i think he's going to use his range to his advantage here i think he's uh on paper the better striker uh, and he's probably going to lean towards wanting to strike against uh, Tiago Santos. So I see Cesar Mutanch, you know, um, just striking from a distance and then, you know, landing whatever power punches he can, eventually catching Tiago Santos in the second round with something big. I think that's where he finishes him, maybe in the first round too. But yeah, I think Cesar with um, being out for uh, almost a year or over a year, he's going to want to play it safe for a bit, but I think he's going to find Tiago Santos chin real good eventually in the second round so there it is ko for sesame touch let's move on to another middleweight match it's between tom kong watson and talus latus another striker versus grappler matchup here now talus latus what does he bring to the table some jujitsu takedowns but of course if he does get you taken down he has a sick top position grappling game you know he's going to put your arm between his legs for a crucifix maybe land some um elbows from there but he's going to look to transition uh to mount where he can get a little bit more creative if not um if he does get the mount i mean uh he might he, you might roll and then he'll sink in the hooks for a rear naked choke you know he can get crafty on the mat and tom kong tom kong watson's gonna have to watch out for that uh watson of course a solid striker um, kickboxing's on point as far as technique. His Muay Thai game is pretty good. I really like his plum where he has decent elbows and knees. You guys kind of saw that against Stanislav Nedkov. If I'm Talos Latis, I'd watch out for that, although that might be Talos Latis' only chance of getting it to the mat because it's not like Talos Latis is going to overwhelm you with a power double leg, you know what I'm saying? But maybe he might even want to try that against Tom Kong Watson because Watson uh, takedown defense is notoriously horrible. So um, as long as Talos Latis doesn't get need and goes for a power double leg, uh, he'll probably get it, to be honest. But um, as far as the clinch game is concerned, uh, he just has to watch out for uh, Tom Kong Watson's uh, barrage of Muay Thai strikes. Um, nevertheless, Talos Latis, I do see getting to the ground one time, but... I do have faith in Tom Kong Watson's uh, scrambling ability. I think he's going to be able to get back up at least once, and uh, that's where he's going to be able to do damage. If I'm Tom Kong Watson, I'm staying away from Talos Latis. Latis is just not a great striker, and Watson should just be able to put a jab in his face, uh, throw in some leg kicks here and there. Um, just don't go for anything high risk against Talos Latis because he'll make you pay uh, with a grappling match. So I'm going to go with Tom Kong Watson here because I think he's going to control the distance, win via unanimous decision, and uh, we'll see what happens from there. So yeah, Tom Kong Watson via striking bike and maybe some cool Muay Thai plum. Again, he just has to watch out for latest takedowns. Moving on, flyweight match between Jose Tome and John Lanker. It looks like a fun fight to kick us off on the main card. Got to go with Lineker here all day, every day. He is the younger of the two. Um, I think that uh, he has faced better competition. Uh, I think he has the striking advantage. He's a little bit more explosive. I think he's a little bit more light on his feet, and he should be able to control this fight as long as it's standing. Um, Jose Tome, though, he might want to uh, make it grimy as far as um, winning the bout in the clinch. You know, just doing cage and clinch there, maybe working for a takedown, putting John Lineker on his back. Lineker has good jujitsu himself. It's just. Um, you know, if Jose Tome puts him on his back, I think that's how uh, Tome is going to win here. Um, Tome is accustomed to striking as well. He's just not going to be as comfortable as a John Lineker. John Lineker, um, you know, if he even hurts you, he's going to smell blood and he's going to, you know, pounce on you. And I think that's eventually going to happen. I'm going to say it happens in the second round. I think he's going to 
beat Jose Tomei with a barrage of strikes. Good combination puncher is John Lineker. And I think I think that eventually when um, Jose Tomei uh, maybe gets knocked down, I think John Lineker is going to finish with either uh, more strikes for a TKO or a submission. I just think it happens in the second round. So that's my pick, John Lineker. And there it is, guys. Sorry for the ultra late video, but those are my picks for UFC 163, Aldo versus Korean Zombie. Again, that main event's going to be sick. Cannot wait for it. It's just my boy's going to get beat in the Korean Zombie. We'll see. Oh, well. Take a look in the description below for my preliminary card picks. Of course, my confidences are going to be listed with my preliminary card picks as well as my main card down there. So uh, if you want to check those out, go for it. I'm um, really not feeling a heck of a whole lot here. It is in Brazil. Certain people just show up to fight here um, that normally wouldn't in other areas. Like, I wouldn't be confident in betting uh, Tom Kong Watson uh, over Taos Latis, for example. So, you know, who knows? Uh, maybe I feel that, um, maybe I don't feel that way if it wasn't in Brazil. So, we'll see. Maybe Talos Latis uh, does his thing, who knows, or other fighters. But nevertheless, I know this card is injury-plagued. Injury Hopefully it's fun. We'll see what happens. Again, leave me your thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Thumbs up for Jose Aldo. Thumbs down for my boy Korean Zombie. And I guess that's about it. So, deuces for all my supporters. Bruises for all my haters. And take care.